together, please. There is room in the basement for the men and women for if there's uh, not any room here. So please make your way to the basement if there's not any more room. Just a few announcements for the, um, for the programs that are upcoming. Uh, we'll have a monthly dinner uh, this coming Saturday. And then the following weekend on September 25th, we have a guest speaker on Sunday at around 1230. So if everybody could please join us, there's a book called Revelation. It's about the, uh, it's a seerah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. You can go ahead and have a seat in the men's section. Uh, the, uh, uh, so that book, Revelation, the author will be coming out to visit our community. And so it'll be for a few hours. So please bring your families out there. It'll be a good chance for all of us to get connected to the seerah, inshallah. Um, and then uh, for those of you who are not on the email, um, if you could uh, send an email to secretary iagd at gmail.com secretary iagd at gmail.com so you can start receiving the information because we'll have some other announcements for programming throughout the end of the year and uh, finally for those people who have uh, volunteered uh, throughout the year uh, and especially for uh, this evening uh, or it, for, from last night to prepare for uh, this morning the decorations that you see at the gymnasium, the snacks that are there. Uh, there's a lot of work that go uh, into that from people who are in the community. Hopefully, inshallah, one of, those, one of these days, some of you can take that responsibility on and share in the responsibility as we are one community. Jazakallahu khairan. Brothers, I did see Sheikh Ali Layla walk in, so this very well could be our last takbir. Let's make it a, a nice, loud takbir, inshallah, to where people in Mecca can hear us. الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر لا إله إلا الله الله أكبر الله أكبر ولله الحمد الله أكبر كبيرا والحمد لله كثيرا وسبحان الله بكرة وأصيلا لا إله إلا الله وحده صدق وعده ونصر عبده وأعز جنده وهزم الأحزاب وحده لا إله إلا الله ولا نعبد إلا إياه مخلصين له الدين ولو كره الكافرون اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد وعلى آل سيدنا محمد وعلى أصحاب سيدنا محمد وعلى أنصار سيدنا محمد وعلى أزواج سيدنا محمد وعلى ذرية سيدنا محمد وسلم تسليما كثيرا صلاة إن شاء الله In Salat al Eid, we'll make three takbirat after the first takbirat, takbirat al ihram before the Quran recitation. In the second rak'ah, we'll make the three takbirat after the Quran recitation and before ruku'ah, insha'Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. <coughs> Allah Akbar. Allah Akbar. الله أكبر الله أكبر بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين 
الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين إهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين سبح اسم ربك الأعلى الذي خلق فسوى والذي قدر فهدى والذي أخرج المرعى فجعله غثاء أحوى سنقرئك فلا تنسى سنقرئك فلا تنسى إلا ما شاء الله إنه يعلم الجهر وما يخفى ونيسرك لليسرى فذكر إن نفعت الذكرى سيذكر من يخشى ويتجنبها الأشقى الذي يصل النار الكبرى ثم لا يموت فيها ولا يحيا قد أفلح من تزكى وذكر اسم ربه فصلى بل تؤثرون الحياة الدنيا والآخرة خير وأبقى إن هذا لفي الصحف الأولى صحف إبراهيم وموسى الله أكبر سمع الله لمن حمده ربنا لك الحمد حمدا كثيرا الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين إهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين إنا أعطيناك الكوثر فصل لربك وانحر إن شانئك هو الأبتر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر سمع الله لمن حمده الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر
السلام عليكم ورحمة الله السلام عليكم ورحمة الله الحمد لله الحمد لله رب العالمين الحمد لله حمدا كثيرا طيبا مباركا فيه كما يحب ربنا ويرضى يا ربي لك الحمد كما ينبغي لجلال وجهك وعظيم سلطانك وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله وصفيه من خلقه وخليله بلغ الرسالة وأدى الأمانة ونصح الأمة وكشف الله به الغمة وجاهد في سبيل ربه حتى أتاه اليقين اللهم اجزيه عنا وعن والدينا وعن الإسلام والمسلمين خير ما جازيت به نبيا عن قومه ورسولا عن أمته اللهم أحنا على سنته وتأفنا على ملته وأوردنا حوضه واسقنا من يده الشريفة شربة هنيئة لا نظمأ بعدها أبدا الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر لا إله إلا الله الله أكبر الله أكبر ولله الحمد الله أكبر كبيرا والحمد لله كثيرا وسبحان الله بكرة وأصيلا لا إله إلا الله وحده صدق وعده ونصر عبده وأعز جنده وهزم الأحزاب وحده لا إله إلا الله ولا نعبد إلا إياه مخلصين له الدين ولو كره, ولو كره الكافرون اللهم صل على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما صليت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم وبارك على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما باركت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم في العالمين إنك حميد مجيد ثم أما بعد my dear respected brothers and sisters it is interesting that the rituals of Hajj are more linked to Ibrahim and his family than to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam and his family. We know that it is Ibrahim alayhi salam and his son Ismail who built Al Kaaba. So when we do tawaf, we are following the Sunnah of Ibrahim alayhi salatu wasallam, and we also remember the family of Ibrahim when we make sa'i between Safa and Marwa, we remember Hajar and her son Ismail alayhi salam. When we sacrifice, we remember the story of Ibrahim alayhi salam when he was asked to sacrifice his own son, regardless whether he was Ismail or Ishaq. This is beyond the point. We also remember Ibrahim alayhi salam when he stoned the shaitan. So all these rituals we do in the time of Hajj, and even for those who don't perform Hajj, we also do the sacrifice and remember these stories of Ibrahim alayhi salam. So what does this mean? That the rituals of Hajj, one of the five pillars of Islam, has more to do with Ibrahim alayhi salam and his family than with Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam and his family. It means a number of things. One is that the message of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam is not a new message. We Muslims don't think Islam or don't look at Islam as a new message. Islam is not a new message. We believe that Ibrahim, Ismail, Ishaq, Yaqub, Nuh, Musa, and Isa, all of them came with the same message. So Rasulullah came to affirm and purify the traditions of Ibrahim alayhi salatu wasalam. He did not bring a new religion. He came to correct the so many errors that the people of the book and the people, the polytheists, have uh, made and to bring them back to the straight path, al-Islam. He, sallallahu alayhi wasallam, struggled so much to bring us back to the pure monotheistic tradition of, of Ibrahim, alayhi salatu wasalam. And we need to understand the life of the Prophet, sallallahu alayhi wasallam, and his struggle in this sense. He came to purify Mecca again to become the central place where all believers and, and, and people of Tawheedullah subhanahu wa ta'ala come and pray. It also means that Muslims, Jews and Christians are the children of Abraham, something that many Westerns overlook when they talk about Muslims and Islamic tradition. Although the Jews take pride in the fact that they are the children of Israel, in the race, but we Muslims with our rich diversity we are not taking pride of a particular race. We rather take pride in the principles that we follow, the faith, the pure Tawheedullah subhanahu wa ta'ala. 
that Ibrahim السلام, was preaching. That's why Al Quran clearly says, "Inna awla nas bi Ibrahim al ladina tabau, wa hada al Nabi wa ladina amanu wa Allah wa liyul mu'minin." Indeed, the most worthy of Ibrahim among the people are those who followed him in submission to Allah subhanahu wa taala and this Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam and those who believe in his message. So we take pride of the fact that we are, we believe, we are among the best followers of Ibrahim, Musa, Isa, and Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa ashabihi ajma'in. And that this ummah is a multicultural, multiracial Muslim, global Muslim community. This is one of the reasons why, why Hajj is one of the five pillars of Islam. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not want us to spend all our entire life with our local community. You cannot just live your entire life with your, you know, uh, homogenous community, the same race or the same culture, the same color. Islam wants you to get out of your local community and go and meet your Muslim brothers and sisters there, to realize this fact that we take pride in following the pure monotheistic religion of Ibrahim and we are part of this global community. The final community is not structured based on race or culture or color. So when we go and say talbiyah, labbaik Allahumma labbaik, we are answering the call of Ibrahim alayhi salam to meet our brothers and sisters there, to make sure that our loyalty is not to a particular race or tribe or nationality. Our loyalty and love is to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. فَوَلِّ وَجْهَكَ شَطْرَ الْمَسْجِدِ الْحَرَامِ So you need to face Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in everything you do and make sure that your loyalty is not your tribe. My tribe, right or wrong? My family, right or wrong? No, we believe in principles. This is what makes this ummah unique. This is what makes this ummah, the best ummah produced for mankind. Also, the fact that the tradition of Ibrahim, alayhi, the, the tradition of Hajj or the rituals of Hajj has more to do with Ibrahim alayhi salam, makes us among the children of Ibrahim and that's why the Quran talks so much about the children of Israel. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talk about the people of the book so much. If you count the ayat or the paragraphs in the Quran talk about Bani Israel, it will be almost one third of the Quran. Almost. And why is that? And how did Al Quran depict Ahlul Kitab. Some are promoting the idea that Islam or Quran is, is a book of hatred because when you read how Al Quran depicted Bani Israel or the people of the book, Muslims naturally will hate them. But that's not true. Some ayat, if taken out of context, misinterpreted, they may promote this emotion, such as the ayat that talks about what the people of the book said, or some of them said. The Jews say, Uzair ibn Allah, the, uh, Israel is the son of God, and the Christians say the Messiah, or the Messiah is the son of Allah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala responds to this by saying, may Allah destroy them, how are they deluded? Other ayat talk about what the statements that some Jews said, or, or some um, unacceptable behavior such as the Jews say the hand of Allah is chained. Allah responds by saying chained are their hands and cursed are they for what they say. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talk about the cursed people, among, uh, the groups among the people of the book. And when we read this ayat, of course, if, if taken out of context, this may lead some Muslims to believe that Quran is a book of hatred and Islam does not toler uh, tolerate others. But when we read another ayat that talks about tolerance and acceptance of others, this may, may confuse some. But that's why it's very important to um, read Al Quran comprehensively. We cannot just read one particular ayat and draw conclusions out of this. This is what ignorant people or the enemies of Islam and Muslims are doing. But for us as Muslims, we need to understand that Quran is one book that complements each other, does not contradict one another. It is extremely important, brothers and sisters, to distinguish between haqq, haqaiq, and huquq, the truth and the facts and the rights. Al-Qur'an talked 
or the Quran as a book of guidance, talked about the true religion, a pure Islam. But the Quran also talked about facts, about the history, and about the corruption the people of the book has made to their own religion and responded to this. But at the same time, the Quran talks about the rights of the people of the book. And there's no contradiction between three of them. There are facts that they changed the, the, the concept of the oneness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when the Christians, for example, said Allah is three in one. They corrupted their word of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And they deviated from the straight path that all their prophets brought to them. Disobeyed their prophets. And they also caused division within themselves after the fact that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given them the clear guidance. So Al-Quran is talking about facts. But at the same time, Al-Quran Al-Kareem talked about the rights of the people of the book and how similar they are to us. They are known in our traditions and the people of Adhimma and, and all, all other minorities, the people of contract, the people of security, that Muslims are responsible to protect them and responsible to guarantee their freedom of religion, building church or synagogues or temples within the Muslim community. The fact that we disagree fundamentally in theological issues does not mean that we violate their rights. But at the same time, Al-Quran emphasized the fact that we must stand for what is just and fair. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us that your hatred to the act or the faith of some people should not prevent you from being just. Stand for what is just. يا أيها الذين آمنوا كونوا قوامين لله شهداء بالقسط ولا يجرمنكم شنآن قوم على ألا تعدلوا اعدلوا هو أقرب للتقوى القرآن says that all you have believed be persistently standing firm for Allah witnesses in justice and do not let hatred of people this was actually talked talked about the the people of Quraysh prevent you from being just be just that is nearer to righteousness and fear Allah, indeed Allah is acquainted with what you do. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us, Allah does not forbid you from those who do not fight you because of your religion and do not expel you from your homes from being righteous toward them and acting justly toward them. To be just to them and to be kind to them. And I like the comment of Dr. Jamal Badawin when he said this ayah, the word just and, and, and kind are not sufficient. And the right translation, according to him, is to be super just and super kind. Because the Quran used the word birr, that we use when we talk about the rights of our parents. Birr al walidain being nice and kind to our parents is more than being kind. It's more than being just. It is super just and super kind to them. Guaranteeing their freedom of religion and worship whatever religion they, they believe in. Despite the profound difference in theology, Islam emphasized the right of them performing or um, exercising their religions. This is something the Prophet ﷺ himself practiced in his life when the Christian delegation came from Yemen, known as Waft Najran, a place called Najran in Yemen. They came to talk to the Prophet about Islam and Jesus and who is the father of Jesus and so on. They stayed in the Prophet's mosque for two or three weeks. And what did they do in these two and three weeks? They prayed. They prayed their own prayers. And the Prophet ﷺ did not see any problem in that. They are the guests of the Prophet ﷺ in one of the most holy mosques in Islam, staying there and praying, living in the Prophet's mosque. This was their hotel. No problem. We disagree with this, but we must respect others and respect others right and freedom of religion and Islam allows us to eat their food and to marry their uh, uh, women you can eat their food and when someone when a Muslim man marries one of the women of Ahlul Kitab what would happen as a result of that what would happen as a result of that? 
How can he hurt, hate her and marry her at the same time? And as a result of this marriage, the uncles, or the mamos of his children, and the grandparents will also be Jews or Christians. And that's absolutely okay. Islam is a very tolerant religion. But at the same time, we need to know the facts. We need to know the differences. Did the Quran criticize the people of the book only or criticize Muslims as well? Al Quran criticized Muslims as well. Is the Quran encouraged us to practice self criticism? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Ya ayyuhaladina amanu, lima taquluna ma la tafalu. In the beginning of Surah Al Saf, Allah says, Oh, you have believed, why do you say what you don't do? Most hateful with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that you say that which you don't do. Allah is talking to, Ya ayyuhaladina amanu, talk to the believers. And when they were defeated in Uhud, and they said, how come Muslims are defeated and Rasul lies with them? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told them clearly in the Quran, Allah supported you in the beginning of this battle, but you have been defeated after the fact that you lost courage and fall to dispute about the order given by the Prophet sallam and disobeyed after the Prophet sallam shown you that which you love. Oh, sorry, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala showed you the spoils of war. And then Allah said, among you are some who desire this world, and among you are those who desire the hereafter. Abdullah ibn Saud said, I couldn't believe that among the Sahaba of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa some who desire only dunya, they went to fight, not for a principle, but they fought to get more money, to get a portion of the spoils of war. So Allah told them, this is the fact. It is a fact, it's haqiqah. Some of you desired the pleasure of this dunya. That's why I've been defeated. It's not purely for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That is the source of defeat. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala criticized the first Muslim community and, and encouraged us to look inward to ourselves. And also the Quran, very importantly, talked so much about Bani Israel, criticized their wrong practice and behavior. Why is that? Why so much? It's because this is the most similar community to us. You are very similar to them. You received a great book. And a great messenger has come to you. Like Musa received the Torah, and Isa received the Gospel, and you. Muhammad was sent to you. And here you are. You have the Quran. And the Quran wants us to learn from their experience, not to practice or um, fall into the same errors that they have fallen in. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told us that I preferred them, I gave them the guidance, as He subhanahu wa ta'ala said. And we have certainly given the children of Israel the scripture, the judgment, and the prophethood, and we provided them with good things and preferred them over the worlds. And what else? And we have given them proofs of the matter of religion. Great prophet clear guidance, revelation, but what happened? And they did not differ and divided themselves into sects and each sect considered others non-believers, except after knowledge has come to them out of jealous animosity between themselves. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala next ayah said to Muhammad sallallahu then we put you, O Muhammad, on an ordained way, ordained way concerning the matter of religion. So follow it and do not follow the inclinations of those who don't know. This is what they did. We gave them the book, clear proofs, guidance, but they divided themselves. And this agreed significantly. Out of what? Out of scientific and scholar, scholarship, scholarly um, 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 debates or out of animosity and hatred because of dunya. So instead of th thinking that Al Quran promotes hatred, Al Quran presents facts and wants this ummah to wake up and to learn from the previous nations' experience. Now the question is did we learn the lesson or have we fallen th in the same errors and mistakes? That's something really we need to think about. And instead of criticizing others, I'll see what the Quran said about them. So what the Quran says about us? If the Quran is to, still comes up until today, 
would the Quran be happy with us and, or criticize us very harshly? I just want to end with this hadith in Bukhari in which Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa said, you will certainly follow the way of those who came before you, hand span by hand span, cubit by cubit, to the extent that if they entered the hole of a, a lizard, you will enter it too. You will follow this, their steps. Human wickedness is not linked to a particular race or group. If we don't learn from the Quran, if we don't learn from the experience of those who came before you, when would we learn? And this is what Rasulullah expected, that you will follow their footsteps. You will commit the same mistakes and you will emulate them. Even if they entered the hole of a lizard, how horrible it is. Who would live in a hole of a lizard? You would follow them too. And they said, Ya Rasul, the Christians and the Jews, he said, who else? So and instead of promoting that Quran, promote hatred, no, Quran present facts and also talk about rights. And Quran wants us to learn. When we go to perform Hajj and follow the footsteps of all the prophets of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, from Adam to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, claiming that we are the followers of all these prophets, we need to come back and think and look in, in the mirror and see what's wrong with us. What's going wrong? The Quran tells us. Defeat does not come from outside, it comes from within. You have the guidance. You don't need more prophets. You have enough. It's you to decide where to put your loyalty and how to dedicate your entire life what kind of principles and values you want to live with. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide us all. And make us, may, may Allah make us among those who follow the tradition of Ibrahim, Musa, Isa, and Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Aqulu qawli hadha wa astaghfirullah li wa lakum fastaghfiruh. Alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Alhamdulillahi hamdan kathiran tayyiban mubarakan fihi kama yuhibbu rabbuna warda. يا رب لك الحمد كما ينبغي لجلال وجهك عظيم سلطانك اللهم صل على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما صليت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم وبارك على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما باركت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم في العالمين إنك حميد مجيد عباد الله تقوا الله وأطيعوه إن الله يأمر بالعدل والإحسان وإيتاء ذو القربة وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي يعظكم لعلكم تذكرون اذكروا الله العظيم يذكركم واشكروه أشكره على نعمه يزدكم ولا ذكر الله أكبر والله يعلم ما تصنعون عيد مبارك to all of you اللهم إننا نسألك الهدى والتقى والعفاف والغنى اللهم إننا نسألك رزقا طيبا وعملا متقبلا اللهم أصلح لنا ديننا الذي هو عصمة أمرنا وأصلح لنا دنيانا التي فيها معاشنا وأصلح لنا آخرتنا التي إليها معادنا اللهم اجعل الحياة زيادة لنا في كل خير واجعل الموت راحة لنا من كل شر يا حي يا قيوم برحمتك نستغيث فأصلح لنا شأننا كله اللهم لا تكلنا إلى أنفسنا طرفة عين ولا إلى أحد من الناس يا رب العالمين اللهم إن نسألك علما نافعا ورزقا واسعا وشفاء من كل داء ونسألك الغنى عن الناس يا رب العالمين اللهم يسل لنا حج بيتك الحرام وزيارة نبيك عليه الصلاة والسلام اللهم وفق الحجاج والمعتمرين وردهم إلى أهلهم سالمين غانمين صالحين يا رب العالمين ب حج مبرور وسعي مشكور وذنب مغفور اللهم يسر الحج لمن لم يحج بيتك الحرام اللهم يسر لنا حج بيتك الحرام وزيارة, وزيارة نبيك عليه أفضل الصلاة والسلام عباد الله إن الله يأمر بالعدل والإحسان وإيتاء ذو القربى وانهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغض يعذكم لعلكم تذكرون مي الله سبحانه وتعالى accept from all of us and عيد مبارك to all of you with this engine okay then take it off